This is a typical example where you have the column reactions. And according to the soils report, the column needs to be supported on piles. So how do you design the pile cap? How do you estimate the required number of piles? Then how do you size the pile cap? How do you determine the thickness and the reinforcement? This is Javier Encinas. And today we're gonna design a pile cap supported on three piles completely from scratch using as deep foundation. Let's get started. When you open as deep foundation, you see the project manager. Here you can see all the modules included in the package, spread footings, strap footings, combined footings, wall footings, and pile caps. In this case, we're gonna create a calculation for a pile cap. Click on this button, assign a name, let's say example. And we have created a calculation of a pile cap. So this calculation has been added to the tree. To open the calculation, just click on the node. And this is a template for a pile cap design in NASDAQ Foundation. All these numbers are default, but you, we can change everything that we want. We're going to start entering the information that we know already in the program. We know the loads. We're going to start with that. For example, we know that dead is 300 kips and life is 200 kips. Let's just start with that. Let's go to the loads tab. For dead, 300 kips. Life, 200 kips and wind 100 kips, vertical load. So we enter all these three numbers. In addition for wind, we have some shear, some lateral loads in X, 20, and in Z, 15. Let's enter that. For wind, the X, 20, and BZ, 15. And we have all the loads already entered there. We can see graphically what we are doing. This is a graphic representation of the pile cap that we are designing. Let's go to the materials tab to enter the pile capacity. It's also part of the statement of the problem. For compression, 200 kips, and for lateral load, 5 kips. Let's enter that. In compression, is 200 kips, and in lateral is five kips. In pile cap, we are using 3000 PSI uh, concrete. Let's use four. And in the column also, let's use four KSI. Let's go back to the geometry tab. Okay, we have entered all the information that we know in the problem. Now let's start trying to tweak all these numbers in the program to uh, optimize the design. Go to a, at a glance tab. Here we can see just a summary of the calculations in one screen. For example, in the pile reactions, we can see that uh, you know, the capacity ratio is 0.18. So we have a lot of piles that we can reduce. We can optimize this substantially. Let's use three piles instead of 16 piles. And let's see graphically how it looks. We also know that the, the column size is 22 by 22, as entered there. And the loads are applied in a pedestal, uh, which is three feet high. So whatever lateral load is applied here will produce a bending moment, an overturning moment uh, at the piles. That will affect the pile uh, reactions, of course. So in the pile edge distance, let's use 1.5 and the pile spacing is about three times the uh, pile size. In this case, the pile size is 10 inches, according to the soils report, is round. So three feet spacing is, is adequate in this case. So in plan view, we, we can see here the, uh, the pile cap with the overall dimensions, six feet by 560 feet in the other direction. The column just at the center, not, a, not eccentric, and supported on, on three piles. In this image, we can see the pile reactions. 
maximum pilot reaction is 188 and the minimum is 140. So go back to at a glance and we can see that the pile capacity is okay because the compression capacity is 200 and we are applying 188. So it's 0.92. We are okay. So the design is adequate regarding the pile reactions. If we go to the graph tab, one way shear at a column phase, we can see the shears at the column phase and the maximum is 338 kips in C at the column phase. So that will define the thickness of the pile cap. Let's go to the geometry tab, pile cap. We are using 48. If we go to at a glance in one way shear. We can see that the shears are not optimized. The maximum is 0.71 meaning that we can reduce a little bit the thickness if we want. Instead of 48, let's say uh, 42, now it's 85%. It's a little better, more optimized. We can reduce it even more if we want. Let's say 38, 40, 91% is uh, more optimized, but we, we can reduce it even more, 38 inches thick. 0.97, so it's, it's perfect. We cannot reduce it anymore. So let's say that the thickness of the pile cap is 38 inches. If the soil cover is one foot, we don't have a water table, so it's, it's down six feet down. So we, we don't have a water table in this, in this problem. So go back to, to the pile reactions. We added the soil cover one foot we don't have any water table. And these are the final uh, pile reactions. So the pile axial capacity is 0 0.98. The horizontal capacity is 0 0.80. Note that we haven't uh, battered any, any pile. So it's vertical piles, use the vertical pile capacity. Is, is enough to, to account for this uh, lateral load. If we go to the condensed tab, we can see a more detailed set of calculations. The pile reactions. Here are the overturning calculations. And the one way shear. In this case, everything is passing meaning that the thickness that we selected is correct, 38 inches. In the punching shear, graphically, we can go to the punching tab. We can see here the maximum punching shear stress, 278 PSI. And we can see that the punching shear is adequate in this design as well. Now, if we go to the bending design, we can see here that we can optimize uh, the reinforcement in this case because the ratios are, are low, very low. So we can go to the reinforcement tab. We are using 12 rebars number 8 at the bottom. Graphically, we can go here to the construction tab. We are using 8 number 8 in each of the three uh, bar directions. We can reduce that, probably uh, say 9 number 8s. Let's go back to at a glance and see the, the reinforcement. It's still very comfortable, so we can reduce it even more. Say 8, maximum ratio 0 0.73, we can reduce it even more. 7 number 8, 0.83, and we can reduce it even more, but let's leave it the way it is. And uh, graphically looks like that, 7 number 8 in each of the three directions at the bottom. And we are specifying hooks at the end of the rebars, as shown here, because this pile cap is small and it's a good practice to hook the rebars in these kind of situations. Let's go to the bending tab. We can see the bending moments at a face of the column. The maximum is 291. Go to the detail tab. This is a set of detailed calculations, step by step, with exposed formulas. 
and references to the ACI code. Or here to the bending calculations. This is a controlling load combination in this case. And we can see here the uh, minimum area of steel. So the controlling ratio is the shrinkage and temperature. If we want to reduce even more, we can reduce one more rebar number. It's 0.97. We are still com still complying with the code. So this is very optimum design, six number eights in each of the three directions of the pile cap at the bottom, hooked. Go to the graph, column. This is interaction diagram of the column. Uh, this is the point representing the loads acting in this column, and this is the capacity. Go to the column tab here, so we are reinforcing this with uh, 12 number sixes. Maybe we can use number eights. And instead of four, let's say three. And instead of two, let's say one. So this is probably a better design with uh, eight number eights. And the capacity is still OK. And number eights to uh, be consistent with the rebars of the pile cap. We are using also number eights. Let's go back one more time to our glance to make sure that everything is complying. Everything is perfect here. The column ratio is 0 0.66. Very good. One way shear is very optimized very well. Punching shear is not controlling. And the reinforcement for, bend, for bending is controlled by the minimum uh, shrinkage and temperature, 0 0.97. Excellent. As you can see, it's very easy to enter the information and check the results immediately in the Foundation. And you can also optimize your design very quickly in a matter of minutes, which otherwise would take you several hours to do this exercise by hand. So you can save a lot of money and effort doing this uh, with the Foundation. With this, we conclude the presentation. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you very much for your attention.